and welcome to my review of Evan Moore's daily six trait writing workbooks. Today I'm going to try to answer the following questions for you um, so that you can make a good choice, good decision when it comes to choosing homeschool curriculum for your children for the next school year. But first, if we have not met, my name is Leslie. Um, you can see some information about me here and ways to connect with me. I also love to get questions and comments uh, down below. So uh, feel free to give me your thoughts or ask your questions. I, I would love to connect with you that way as well. Now, moving on to the review. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is cover how this curriculum actually works, how this workbook works. So the first thing to know is that there are 24 weeks of lessons in each workbook. And I really like that because that gives you a whole lot of wiggle room for your school year. So for example, if you want to maybe skip a few weeks of writing during the school year, maybe do writing for three or four weeks and then take a week off, uh, you can do that, get a little bit of break from writing uh, and still finish the curriculum within the school year. Um, also, if you want to extend the writing lessons, and I want to say that the teacher's manual does talk a little bit about that. Uh, but if you do choose to extend the writing lessons, you, you've got that wiggle room, so you can do that and still finish the workbook within the school year. Now, uh, it is called Daily Six Trait Writing. So uh, the traits that are covered are ideas, organization, word choice, sentence fluency, and voice. If you're counting, that's five traits. We'll get to the sixth one in a minute. Uh, but the way the workbook is set up is that there's basically a unit for each of these traits and that they're taught separately um, and uh, different aspects of each trait is taught through several lessons, several weeks of lessons in each unit. So I really like that it's broken down like that. So instead of your student having to focus on all of these traits at once, uh, they can uh, zero in on a particular one and really learn that one well and kind of master that trait um, according to the grade level of the student. I find that the workbooks are very grade level appropriate, so it, it'll be grade level appropriate. So for your, your first grader isn't going to be learning stuff that's above his head. Um, so that's really nice that way that it's got things broken out that way. Now that sixth trait is conventions. That's basically grammar, spelling, punctuation rules. And that trait, instead of having a separate unit for that, is integrated throughout the workbook. So every day the student is uh, focusing on a particular writing convention. So this is nice because, I mean, they will recognize that writing convention, let's say it's a punctuation rule, they will recognize as having learned it in their grammar curriculum. And that's good that they've learned it there. You know, when learning something new, it's good to learn. It's good to learn it in isolation before then transferring it to uh, daily practice. Uh, so they'll recognize it from their spelling curriculum or their grammar curriculum. But then they're shown here in this workbook in the daily six trait writing. You know, here's why you learned that, and given an opportunity to incorporate that punctuation rule or grammar rule into their writing. So that's really nice. I love how that's set up. Each week of lessons uh, is, uh, there's five days of uh, work for the student. The first four days are writing practice. So the first day they're introduced to the new uh, trait or aspect of the trait that they're covering that week. And that's um, listed at the top and uh, spelled out at the top with a sentence or two and then the rest of the week so for four days they're practicing that trait along with whatever uh, convention writing convention they're focusing on that week the fourth day of the um, practice pages is basically a pre-writing page for their writing prompt which is going to be on the fifth day so what i would do with that is on the fourth day I would say, okay, let's look ahead to what writing you're going to do tomorrow. And we'd go over the writing prompt and, and then say, okay, so let's do a good job on today's work, that fourth day um, of the lesson for that week, that, that fourth day worksheet, basically. Okay, let's do a good job with this because you're going to use the information that you put here for your writing tomorrow. 
And the better job they do on that fourth day uh, of the activity page, the easier the writing prompt will be for them. Now, what should you purchase if you choose to use this curriculum? Uh, the first thing you'll need is the teacher's manual. It has teacher instructions in there, which are really nice, especially if you're not comfortable with teaching writing, if this is maybe your first time teaching writing or you're just not comfortable with it. So that, that'll be really nice for you to um, help you along with that. Also includes a scoring rubric. Uh, so if you are into grading your elementary students' writing, I don't do that. Um, I don't do much grading at all for elementary school, but if that's something that you want to do, that scoring rubric will be helpful. And there's also an answer key for the activity pages. The student workbook, you'll also need that. Uh, it, it contains all the activity pages plus a page to do the writing with a writing prompt at the top and then lines for them to do their writing right there in the workbook. All right, so how much time is it going to take? Uh, for both for prep and also for like on the daily. For prep, uh, I feel like this is an open and go curriculum. I mean, it is a workbook. Uh, you don't need to purchase, like you don't need to purchase a bunch of supplies or anything. It's not like science or history, for example, that you might need to purchase a lot of extra books and things to go along with it. So it's, it's a workbook, so it's just open and go. Uh, if you do purchase the eBooks, you will need to uh, print those out and assemble the pages or if you like to take apart your workbooks maybe to put them into a binder system or um, or like a workbox system then I mean you'll need to do the work for that but in general it's you know other than that it's um, not a whole lot of prep to go with it now either weekly or on the daily there will be some teaching required from you uh, the workbook pages if you have a student that's a really good reader, they might be fine with just reading what's on the page and uh, learning from there. Like you, you may have a student that does really well with that. But I would still recommend, even if you have a student that's that can do independent work really well, I would still recommend that um, the first day of the lesson, so you know each lesson is five days, so that first day, uh, there's going to be a new either trait or aspect of a trait being introduced. So I would still recommend that you spend a few minutes with your student to go over that first page and that trait and introducing that trait to them and um, or that aspect of the trait and ensuring that they um, understand it, uh, ensure that they're not struggling with it. Now, if you have younger students, you may also just want to work with them every day as well. Like with an older student, you may be able to just introduce that trait on day one, then let them work independently for the rest of the week. But for a younger student, you may, especially if they're not a good reader yet, you may want to um, work with them every day. That's what I did with my first grader. I did writing with him every day. Uh, sometimes I would look at the activity page for that day and say, just kind of introduce it real quick and send him off to work on it on his own because I knew he could um, and for my third grader um, sometimes he would just get started on it his own if he understood what was going on but every day um, for both of those students I expected I might have to spend some time with them with writing uh, because it, I felt like it was better to spend a couple with a couple of minutes with them each day than um, to you know wait a couple of weeks and to realize they don't really know what's going on <laughs> so so um, instead of having to backtrack and spend more time, it's better just to spend a couple of minutes and make sure they master what they're learning each day. Um, now, even if you do have to sit with your students every day to do writing with this workbook, it's still not going to take a lot of time. I would say the activity pages are less than 20 minutes per day, um, maybe even less than 10 minutes. Um, and for the younger grades, maybe much less than that. Uh, they're it's broken down writing is broken down so well uh, using the daily six trait writing that that each day's worth of activities doesn't take a whole lot of work now the writing prompt page is a different story uh, they could still take less than 20 minutes to do the writing prompt especially if they did really well um, and were very, very complete on that day four writing pre-writing day um, but you know, just depending on your student and how well they prepared for that writing prompt. It, it 
could take longer. All right, so how do I rate this? So this is using the criteria that I use to rate uh, different curriculum options. The first one is it written by experts. And just like with every uh, Evan Moore product, I make the assumption that it is because they sell to a wide audience, to like traditional schools, uh, like public schools. And so I assume uh, based on what I see uh, in each workbook um, and just the uh, reputation of the company that it that each workbook is written by an expert. So I give it five stars. Does it include planning suggestions? Um, I include this criteria because if you purchase curriculum that's targeted to homeschoolers, usually they have a section where it's like, here's how you might want to plan this. Uh, this doesn't have that. However, it's so straightforward, you know, 25 weeks of lessons, five days for each lesson. You know, it's so straightforward that I, I kind of feel like it's, this is included in there. They're telling you, here's how to use this curriculum. You do day one, day two, day three. So I say five stars for that because it's so straightforward. Does it teach you how to use it? Again, um, if it's curriculum that's targeted to a homeschooler, then they will have the section about how to use it. This is not targeted to homeschoolers. This is targeted to traditional school settings, to teachers in a traditional classroom setting who are accustomed to creating lesson plans and um, teaching in different ways and um, kind of diversifying their teaching for different students. Uh, so there is some instruction in the teacher's manual about how to use uh, the curriculum, but um, it's not going to be as much as if, as if it was written for a homeschooler who does not have a background in teaching and writing. So I give it four stars because, again, it is so straightforward um, and user friendly, um, but it doesn't have maybe some extras that it would have if it were targeted to a homeschooler. Stepwise learning, I give it five stars because, yes, I mean, the way it's structured is to break down writing into the different traits and then to kind of master different aspects of those traits at a grade level um, appropriate in a grade level appropriate way. So um, in, they're not learning 10 things at a time. They're not learning all six traits at one time. If every week of lessons gave new teaching to the student about each of the traits, this would not be stepwise learning. That's too much at once, but that's not how this is structured. Uh, this is structured to break things down very well into bite-sized pieces, pieces. So that's really nice. That's my favorite kind of learning for my kids. Uh, really the only way to go as far as I'm concerned. So this does that very well. The daily six trait writing does that very well. Uh, you don't really need extra supplies for this. Might need it. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but the way the curriculum is set up, you don't need extra supplies. So I don't even consider that. And is it homeschool friendly? Yes, it is. It's not targeted to homeschoolers but it is homeschool friendly in that it's obvious how to use it and it's broken down so well that even if you're um, not used, not comfortable with teaching and writing, I think most people can do a pretty good job with it. So the overall rating I give it is four and a half, star, four and a half stars based on these criteria. Now my overall feelings rating for this is probably closer to four stars and here's the reason for that. Um, I have not used this for upper grades. I've used this for first grade and third grade. And for those grades, I thought it's great. It's been a great bridge for us to take my students from not being comfortable with writing, not doing any writing at all, to preparing them um, to do more advanced writing, more, more robust writing. Uh, but I wonder with the way it's set up, um, how well it does in the upper grades. I think this goes through eighth grade. So uh, I have not used those workbooks, so, you know, I can't speak to that, but I, I just wonder um, with the way it's structured, would this give my students the writing skills that I want to give them starting fourth, fifth grade? Uh, so that's why I give it a, my feelings rate is more of a four stars because I, I don't know that I would love this for upper grades. It's the bottom line there so anyway so how 
will this work well for your family? And so here's what I do when I'm determining, um, when I'm trying to decide if a particular curriculum option will work well for one of my students. I look at what learning methods that student, that particular student, uh, does well with. And I, what are the learning methods or the teaching methods that spark my students' attentiveness, that help them to uh, process the learning and to uh, put it into practice? So what learning methods work well for them? And then also what social setting works well? Do they do well in a group? You know, will they do well learning this in a group or will uh, working one-on-one -on -one with me be best or will they be able to do this independently? You know, is, is that going to work out for them? Will they learn this well independently? Uh, so I look at all those things. So if we look at daily six trait writing, you know, obviously not every curriculum is going to be a home run for each of these things I have here on this table. So for this uh, curriculum in particular, since it is a workbook style, I'd say it works best for students who really do well with the written word, uh, who can just take a workbook, read the instructions on there, understand it, uh, can do writing on their own um, without any struggle, and who like to work independently, so a social setting of independent work. So I would say that's the best type of student to, to use daily six trait writing. However, what if we have a student who um, needs to use the listening learning method, listening to the spoken word, because maybe they're young and um, they don't really read well um, on their own yet and can't read the, all the instructions or understand all the instructions or it's a struggle for them. Or maybe they just process information better when they listen to it. Uh, this could work for them if you as the parent are willing to sit with them and um, even though it's a workbook, if you sit with them every day and do the workbook with them, read all the instructions to them, um, and maybe even for the writing assignments, have them narrate those writing assignments to you for if they like to speak their answers and they, ha and they struggle with writing things, narrate those uh, writing assignments to you and you write them down. Uh, so for students who prefer the spoken word because of age or just because of the way that they learn, they like to learn, then this could work well if you're willing to sit with them uh, to complete writing with them. Now, if your student is visual, so they like pictures, color, um, um, maybe charts, that kind of thing, or if your student likes to learn in a physical way where they're touching things or um, like working with their hands or moving, uh, then this could work for them, but it'll take some modifications from you and some extra work from you. And so we'll talk about that uh, a little more in a few minutes. Um, if, if they're okay with just having pictures, the workbook pages do have some cute pictures and drawings. It's not in color, uh, but if that's enough for your student, then that might be okay. Maybe they want to add their own drawings or do some coloring, you know, when they do their writing, that might work out for them. Um, but if they need a little more, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, now, if your student likes to work one-on-one -on -one and they don't like to work independently, and I have students who just do, they just want to sit with me all the time, <laughs> um, then this will work if you're willing to sit and do it with them. If you're buying this workbook because you're thinking, I need them to do this by themselves, um, but they're not willing to do that, then that kind of takes out that independent aspect of it. Uh, if you want to teach writing as a group, this is a really big maybe. Uh, these are these workbooks are targeted to certain skill levels. So if you have students who are of a similar skill level, so let's say you have a second grader and a third grader, maybe you could uh, choose to do just the second grade workbook for both of those students, teach them together. I mean, this is uh, created for a classroom setting, right? So you could do the group teaching and then they could do some independent work the rest of the time, um, independent on their own and with some one-on-one -on -one if um, they need some extra help. So it really depends on, on um, how you want to do writing. Um, if, if you want to spend that extra time and want to put your students on one level um, instead of at their skill level, appropriate level. 
Okay, moving on, my tips for use. Okay, first of all, uh, if you purchase the ebook of the student workbook, then I recommend uh, printing it so that um, it's like legal pad style. Uh, especially if you have kids who really struggle with having their wrist when they're writing, like on the spine. And I have a student who like, that would drive him bonkers. So I found that at the homeschool printing company, if you, st if you send your files to be printed there and, and bound there, like on a spiral, on a coil, uh, then you can choose to have a bound at top so that the pages will flip up. And that way, no matter what page your students are on, they can just, you know, they're never gonna have that spine in their way. Uh, when they're doing their writing. So for kids who are real picky about that, that's something to think about. For kids who are reluctant writers, either because they struggle with spelling or because their um, hands haven't built up strength yet to uh, write several sentences at a time um, and their hands cramp up and they're just uncomfortable with it or they struggle with handwriting, then uh, allow your students to narrate the, or even type if, they, if they've learned how to type, the writing assignments. Like don't get like spelling issues or, um, or handwriting issues get in the way of completing writing assignments. You can do something else. Either they can narrate it to you or they can type them up. All right, like I mentioned before, I think this is great for grades one through three, maybe grade four uh, after that. Uh, you may want to explore a more um, robust uh, writing curriculum for your students to really prepare them for like middle school and high school. So for kids, so this is back what we we're talking about before, those visual and hands-on learners. If you have a student who's a visual or hands-on learner or both and maybe really likes arts and crafts type things uh, but doesn't enjoy writing and really resist writing. If you have a student like that, well, I would first point you toward a different writing curriculum. Uh, Write Shop Primary, you may want to explore that. I do have a pretty lengthy review of that here on my YouTube channel that you can check out to see how that works and, um, and if that might work for your student. However, if you really like uh, what I've said so far about daily six trait writing, the way it breaks it down into like individual traits and then uh, like particular aspects of each trait. If you really enjoy that aspect of this curriculum and also the opportunity to do independent work, then what you could do is uh, for your students writing assignments, complete those writing assignments in a creative way. And that's what Write Shop Primary does. Uh, the Writing assignments are all published in some interesting creative way. Uh, so for example, maybe doing a card, creating a card, or uh, a game, and like they do their writing assignment, but then that writing assignment is put like on the game board. So there's like fun, uh, crafty activities to do for every writing assignment. So you could incorporate that kind of thing into this curriculum um, and have them do their writing assignment with the promise that, hey, we're, we're going to, like, once you've written the words, then we're going to incorporate it into this other fun activity, um, making a game board or an, an art project or, um, like, with Write Shop Primary, one of the activities was, I think the writing assignment was about space. So they did a little rocket and they rolled up the, the writing assignment and put it into the rocket and kind of flew that around. So there are... Uh, or maybe even a shape book. Uh, that was a fun one that even my kid who like hated writing really liked doing. He did his writing, but then it was put into a shape book. So uh, explore some crafty, creative ways to, pub to publish their writing assignments. You can go to Pinterest and search for writing crafts for kids, and there's tons of ideas there uh, for writing crafts. Um, now, keep in mind... <laughs> that this is going to blow like all the things I said before about this being open and go and like less than 20 minutes a day. This might blow those statements out of the water. Uh, if you're going to incorporate a writing craft each for each lesson, then you're going to have some prep. It's not open and go anymore. You're going to have some prep. You're going to have to find those writing assignments or find those crafts for each writing assignment and get whatever supplies you need for it. 
Um, and then there's the extra time of actually completing the craft and, and doing the fun publishing option. Now, since this is a 25 lesson uh, workbook and each lesson is five days, that's only 125 days right there. So what you could do is add an extra day to each lesson. So you do your five days in the workbook and then the sixth day is um, doing whatever craft you want to do to publish the writing assignment. Um, well, so if you just add an extra day to each lesson, you're still only at about 150 days. So you, you have, if I've done my math right, <laughs> and so you still have a lot of wiggle room there uh, to do, um, take some time off from writing or if you have six days or whatever and still complete writing within, like in good time, within the school year. So those are my thoughts about this writing curriculum, about daily six trait writing. Please let me know about any questions uh, you have um, or any thoughts. Put those down in the comments. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.